Hello, this is the AVIT department, Westminster Computer Lab. Today we want to discuss a major resource that people can use to help them get acquainted and use the, compu the computer lab uh, here at the church. Uh, this uh, resource has been carefully uh, planned and, uh, and uh, created by the AVI department uh, and will continue to develop as feedback comes in and as people contribute uh, to the growth of this particular resource. Uh, this resource is a web page uh, that is, uh, has several features uh, that make it uh, very interesting. You can access uh, this resource uh, from the internet. You can, there will be a link on the Westminster United web page when it becomes available. Uh, currently, any computer account uh, that has been created in the computer lab uh, will um, load in this default web page when you launch a web browser. I'm just going to launch a web browser right now. And right now it shows the, this resource, which is called the Westminster Computer Lab Guide on the side. Uh, the home page uh, takes us to a news feed with text that's scrolling up. If you find that the text is moving too fast, you can place your mouse on it and it stops. And if you take the mouse off the text area, uh, then it uh, resumes scrolling. Uh, this provides general information for uh, new people, people that aren't aware of the computer lab or want to find out more information regarding the computer lab. In addition to this uh, news feed are some other um, features. For example, an online AVIT form. Instead of having to fill out a, a, um, a hard copy form, uh, there is ability to fill out um, a request um, that will be automatically emailed to the uh, AVIT facilitator as well as to the church hub uh, for uh, confirmation and processing. Um, I'm going to just demonstrate this and this will actually send out uh, uh, a request to them and I'll have to make sure in the message that uh, this is just for testing purposes only. Um, in the name you should be giving your full name, uh, we'll give mine. For email address, it is absolutely necessary that you uh, place in an email address. The way that this system works and this program works, if you do not supply a valid email address, it will this uh, app, this program will not run properly. Uh, you might ask yourself, well then, how do I know if this worked? Uh, if uh, in case I didn't send out an email address, and it will actually use that email address and send an email to that address for confirmation. So in other words, if you're not sure whether this um, request was sent out or not, check your email address and if you got a message um, that's th the same message that basically the ABIT or the church hub is getting, then you know that it was sent to them. Uh, so I'm just going to type in my email address. It uh, picks up automatically the uh, date of the service request. It's today's date. Uh, you should select either an action group or other if you're not um, uh, if you're not uh, belonging to a particular group. For myself, I belong to ABIT. And the type of request, there are different things here. If you notice a problem in the computer lab, you can select service. If it's a situation where you want to book the computer lab for use, you just select booking. If you select training, you're requesting a training session. And if you just want to give feedback or make a comment or somehow communicate uh, via um, regarding something to do with the computer lab, it can be a communication. I'm going to leave it at communication since this is for testing purposes. And then there's a little text area here where you can type in um, details regarding the request, a little bit more detail. Uh, this just indicates please request uh, replace this text with your own details regarding the computer program or request. For example, try to give some detail um, regarding what the problem is or what the request is or comment or uh, information pertaining to a training session. So I'm just going to select this and type it out and just say uh, this uh, was uh, just for testing purposes while uh, filming a uh, video, a YouTube video. Please 
disregard. my name down there as well, although it's fairly evident. Click on the submit request. Then automatically it's giving the indication here the computer lab request has been submitted. To confirm that please read this information because a lot of people just get excited seeing oh it's been submitted. This is to confirm that you've submitted the ABT, AVIT request form. Note, if you did not provide a valid email address, then this form may not have been submitted. It tells you the email address that you have used, and it says, please check this email address as confirmation. Um, and if you're unable to submit the form, then there are hard copy forms that you can pick up from the church and from the computer lab or from the hub uh, to fill in and, uh, and proceed that way. So uh, if you do not have a valid email address, uh, then, um, of course, um, you should be able to, you're permitted access to contact ABIT even if it's a hard copy form. What happens here? Email is simply sent out with that information and it's sent to them uh, and, uh, and then they will uh, get back to you uh, to confirm a booking or uh, confirm your request uh, regarding the status of it uh, or get back to you with a comment that you uh, mentioned, etc, etc, etc. Another useful, one of the probably the most uh, useful uh, features of this uh, resource is online computer training. At this point in time, we just don't have the resources uh, for one-on-one -on -one teaching. Uh, so the next best method is self-directed teaching, including not only tutorials that are written, not only user manuals that are written, uh, but also uh, YouTube videos, either ones that have already been created that are already on the net. The idea being, why reinvent the wheel if there's already great material that's out there? Um, but also the ability for us at Westminster United Church to generate our own customized um, YouTube uh, instructional videos. And with the computer lab, uh, you can do that, and actually in time there will be an instructional video on how to create instructional videos uh, via the Westminster Computer Lab. Now uh, you just click on to online uh, computer training, and it looks as if there are uh, just pieces of text here, and they look like they're not links, but actually you do click on them to activate a link. Uh, so for example, if you click on to read view me first, um, here are various um, links to uh, resources. Uh, some, If there isn't a link there, there will be shortly. Um, um, this is a work in process uh, and will um, evolve uh, over the months and possibly years to come. Um, so it's recommended that uh, users uh, view this first because it does give a lot of the uh, basics. Uh, for example, um, uh, reporting uh, computer lab problems. If you click onto it, it opens up a wiki. Wikis will be discussed in future um, uh, YouTube videos to indicate the power of them, the ability to create very fast um, and uh, very uh, accessible and uh, very fluid uh, documents uh, that can change, uh, where it can be changed by one or can be changed by many. Um, this is the way that has allowed the IT department to document this stuff very, very quickly and on the fly. Without it, uh, we wouldn't be able to generate the information uh, to you uh, as fast as possible. Clicking out of it, uh, you can continue on with uh, the other resources. Um, computer lab basics, uh, very, very important. Um, a lot of the YouTube, uh, a lot of the uh, instructions are here. For example, powering up the computer system um, to get this far, you may have already taken a look at this uh, tutorial or you may not have. Uh, there is a YouTube video on this that you can click on to actually, um, um, if you're more of a visual learner, to see uh, what the steps are. If you're more of a person that likes to take notes or take a look at stuff, there are there is actually uh, instructions that are here along with pictures where you would follow the instructions uh, step by step. In computers, it is important to follow the procedure step by step to prevent uh, perhaps hardware damage or just to prevent frustration by not following the proper procedures correctly. In addition to these 
initial areas, there are tutorials uh, that can be grouped into different categories, office suite, graphics, and audiovisual. Uh, these are internet resources as they stand. Um, for example, the office suite has excellent um, uh, references to using um, Open Office Writer, which is very much like Word, where they actually have you download documents and you read the documents and follow the instructions and edit them on the fly. It's excellent resource material. There are also uh, other resources like YouTube videos, for example, um, um, here's a quick, uh, a quick access to a lot of these materials on how to start up the computer lab or to grab student work or how to log out of the computer lab. But also uh, YouTube videos that are on the net regarding using open office or graphics or audiovisual. In addition, user manuals uh, are there to, uh, if you're more of a technical nature. What we're trying to get across here is all about access. Uh, everybody has their different learning styles, uh, therefore um, our resource uh, is attempting to cater to as many different learning styles as possible. In addition to this, we have computer lab resources. And this is sort of a, sort of a miscellaneous um, area where um, it's not, uh, it may not be related to computer training, um, but it is something that may be of use to the computer users. For example, um, encouraging you to perhaps download and install um, a lot of these applications on your computer at home. You might say, well, I don't have a Linux computer at home. A lot of this open source software is not only free, um, but available on multiple platforms. Uh, for example, like uh, not only Linux, but Microsoft Windows. Uh, and um, Apple OS X, um, it's, uh, this, this resource will definitely grow in the months and years to come and you might surprise yourself to find that there's actually viable, affordable, alternative uh, methods to do the same things that you can do but without paying money, which is, uh, which is interesting, it's sort of a different way of looking at things. Again, the idea to try to encourage um, training, um, lifelong learning, learning beyond actually the computer lab. Uh, there's other things that will be available, for example, the acceptable usage policy of the do's and don'ts of the computer lab. Copyright uh, guidelines. Uh, now that we have a computer lab, uh, we have to worry that Pandora doesn't get released out of the box. Um, although um, it's, uh, we don't want to discourage creativity, um, there are issues that could come back to haunt the church, for example, uh, scanning pictures that um, of people who have not given their permission, um, copying images from the internet uh, without permission of the artist, and, uh, and can cause problems. Already this is uh, causing problems up in YouTube where people are doing videos and using soundtracks from music that is copyrighted and uh, that if there are any complaints, uh, um, the individuals are required to remove um, that material. So we want to make sure uh, that we, if we're using this resource or we're creating things like music and videos, we have to be very aware of this stuff. So guidelines to help you make the right decision. Um, resources for online collaboration, which um, will provide uh, perhaps a taste of a vision of what could occur in the future. Uh, to, to uh, help out volunteers and make their life easier and to work as a team uh, and in a way to do so that actually would reduce workload and uh, distribute it better and make things more productive and an area for forums uh, where uh, you, you can print out a, for example, a uh, AVIT service request form in case you didn't have a computer email account but uh, you do have a computer and a printer or you can or perhaps a printer in the computer lab uh, where you can, uh, you can uh, print it out from. Uh, so just wanted to show you that this resource is here. Uh, it will grow over time. Uh, the success uh, of this resource will um, depend not only on the AVT department and its volunteers, but also feedback uh, from the people that are actually using the source and word of mouth, uh, mentioning to uh, the public 
uh, that this is out there and to uh, try to encourage uh, curiosity because uh, nothing is more powerful than the, uh, than the advertising word of mouth. And, uh, once people start to uh, see what's here and the, uh, what the resources are, it can only benefit the church to a, great, uh, to a greater cause. This is the AVIT department, just wishing you happy volunteering. And uh, we're just here, all in the same boat, trying to just go that extra mile to make your life a little bit easier.